it's a it's a pleasure to meet Thank you. you. Uh, and pleasure. yeah, and I'm very excited about talking. I was very uh, happy when your agent uh, reached out to me and uh, uh, I uh, to talk about this important book. Wish I had this book about ten years ago. Really? <laughs> yes. Why? Well, we. Um, we, it's of course it wasn't it was a tra a tragic accident but my uh, brother-in-law died tragically in a uh, his airplane I'm so sorry. Uh, wow. yeah it was and uh, but uh, I, I was reading uh, your book and of course uh, this is more in a book for preparation someone to prepare right. for for the end of right. life right. but uh, but you, you or know, somebody but, you love for sure yes 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 exactly but but uh, you know, you, it's something that uh, there's not enough preparation for sure. And like you said in the um, in the introduction of your book, you know, even though uh, you are walking through the the valley and getting prepared, you're really never prepared right. for for losing someone you love. But this is wonderful. I want to first of all introduce you a little bit to my Good, audience. Please. Yes, so Good. Mr. Georgia Walgamuth. There you go. Okay. Yeah, he has good. been in the media uh, business for 35 years. He was a former president uh, for, of Thomas Nelson Publishers. And he is the founder of Walgamuth and Associates, which is a literary agency exclusively representing the writing work more than 100 authors actually that's an old it's over 200 actually um and uh, robert is a speaker best-selling author of more than 20 books several books and um among his professional accomplishments he he has served also two terms as the chairman of the evangelical christian publisher so uh, Pub publishers association and you have an honorary doctorate degree from Taylor University. I do, that's right. So this is beautiful. Well, um, Robert, I'm holding a copy of, an advanced copy of your book, right. Finish Line. Tell me what, I know already because I've been reading it, so, but tell my, my audience what inspired you to write this important book. Uh, well, Let's start with the fact that I had been married for almost 45 years and lost my wife to ovarian cancer in 2014. And I say in the book, after having taken care of her, I was her primary caregiver for 30 months, that she was a warrior. She was amazing, facing her own death. And really her, the way she did that Patricia, was to eliminate, really, my fear of death. Mm. Um, she was confident in her walk with Christ, her faith, very intimate, very deep. And um, and what the way she handled all of that was remarkable. Um, and lots of people uh, came to faith in Christ as a result of her courage and her testimony so that inspired it that's why i start the book with that story uh the last book i did before this one is called gun lap mm -hmm. which is that when when a runner uh runs a distant a two like a two mile race around a track the starter start uh, fires a gun at the beginning of the race but then when the lead runner starts his last lap they they fire the gun again mm -hmm. and that's called the gun lab mm -hmm. so the, the that book was about living well the last years of your life but this one is about the end of your life it's about mm -hmm. that's why it's called finish line so it's you run your last lap and then you run down the straightaway to your finish line so bobby's death in 2014 surely was part of the inspiration but it seemed like the natural follow-up to the gun lab book Absolutely. Why is this an important book for the public today? Well, I guess the obvious is if you don't care, take care of these things, someday it'll be too late. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, the, the, the reason why 
I think so many of these things are important to take care of is not for you, but it's for the people who survive you, mm -hmm. your loved ones. Um, and I, I get into detail, like planning your own funeral mm -hmm. so that your family never says, I wonder what Robert would want us to do or who he would like for us to invite to speak or are, are we going to sing hymns? What are we going to do? So all of that is in writing. Mm -hmm. So your loved ones don't have to worry about it. Yes. Um, so that's uh, that's part of the takeaway. Also, 60% um, of the people in America who die, die without a will. Yes. That means the probate court determines where your stuff and where your money goes. And you're not there to help them mm -hmm. make good decisions. Yes. So basic things like that, that people miss and so i encourage readers and the people who love the people who are my age to get these things taken care of before it's too late absolutely and one of the the reasons why i mentioned i i wish that i had seen this you know again uh you cannot uh, imagine what's going to happen to you but uh we had the situation with my brother-in-law he was only 52 when the accident help, happened in good wow, health, 52. right? 52 years old, um, in good health. And, uh, you know, uh, he is talking to his wife. Uh, many times we have heard about that. You know, they, they, he, he never imagined, of course, that he would die this young. He had no health Incredible. issues How or nothing, he right? How did he die? He, uh, he had his, his plane crashed. He had a, his own plane and, yeah, and, and it unfortunately... Uh, one of the engines uh, quit uh, up on takeoff and wow. he wasn't wow, able to, to make it. Yeah, it's, it was a horrible, was tragic. Yes, but I, I uh, one of the things that, you know, I have a very good friend of mine whose husband also died of cancer. And they and it was also a journey of actually two years for her. It was recent, about about a year and a half ago that okay. he passed away. Okay. And she was one of, one of the people that, told me what you just said you know that even though they had two years to prepare that there were still so many things that uh, they that that they had not thought about like it was things like you know you have to make sure that your wife's name is in every bank account that there is, is exactly right? right oh yes different things that she's been telling me say hey make sure you know because you really don't know so um, you know, when you think about a book saying finish line, you think, oh, this is a book for somebody who's who has a family member who is, you know, dying, but not really. It's a book for anyone that right. want, doesn't want to make certain mistakes. Right. Is that correct? Is that a correct assessment? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. And you're the and you're the best person to do that. Um, so that you're making the decisions for your family while you can rather than waiting until it's too late so yeah. Yeah. I and i talk about it's it's in the nuts and bolts chapter about having these things taken care of also mm -hmm. at my age you need a primary care physician who knows your history uh knows your medications all that it may that may seem obvious to some people but a lot of people don't have that um mm -hmm. an attorney because there are a lot of legal things that that your family has to decide or has to deal with um uh, a pastor and a financial planner all those things mm -hmm. so that all those things are covered while you're there to make the decisions rather than having to wait until you're gone and then your family's saying i don't know what to do now so yeah and passwords how's that don't i mean don't you know that there are people and there are stories where people simply are not able to access your documents and so forth in your computer oh my on your phone yes. um, and you're gone and there's no way we, we have a very close friend her husband's been gone for probably six years and there are things that she still doesn't know imagine yes yeah. yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, you know, you, we cannot live uh, as as if we would never die because, you right. know, unless Jesus, exactly. com Jesus comes back to rapture us, we're <laughs> all going there That's right. <laughs> sooner That's right. or later. And yeah. uh, so it's, it's yeah. It, and let me ask you this. Why do you think that even within the Christian community, you know, those that 
we know where we're going um and it's still it's it's such a taboo to talk about preparing for death well death and taxes isn't that are those the third rail of conversations you don't talk and i would yeah. guess probably politics would go in there too death taxes mm -hmm. politics um you know i think there's a sense in which we don't really believe it's going to happen to us mm. um and you know it's so interesting as as i said 30 percent. i guess i didn't mention this 30 percent of us will die suddenly my wife's daddy was 53 years old one saturday morning stepped under the tennis court to play with three of his friends and that was it he fell to the ground he was dead before he hit the tennis court um 30 percent of us will die like that mm -hmm. like when you go to sleep at night you just mm -hmm. you close your eyes and that's it 70 percent of us will have what i call an exit ramp you'll have time my late wife had 30 months um some people don't have that much time but just just kind of for for reference 30 percent of us will not have a a chance to make things right with our loved ones to um to tell them where stuff is i tell in, in one of the chapters i talk about um a friend who died and left unbelievably awful things in files and so forth oh. that when his family went through them they discovered a whole life they knew nothing about yes i so not a case like that that's that's in the chapter called no secrets mm. so better to get all that stuff cleared confessed unpacked because when you're gone they will go through it all yes absolutely uh, and that, another kind of a fun thing sort of fun your kids don't want your stuff so you know you might have a collection so of, true. if you have a collection of spoons or teacups <laughs> and you think they're wonderful you got them from all over the world your kids don't want your stuff no it, it may it may be valuable to you and probably is that's why you've collected it but i have my older sister who's a precious lady she's 82 and in really wonderful health and she has this incredible collection of cut glass figurines uh -huh. and she has three kids and they've said to her when you're gone if you don't take care of this stuff we're going to get one of those dumpsters and put it in our drive in your driveway and throw it all away i know I mean that sounds incredibly disrespectful, right? But it's it true. Is true. We have we have a neighbor here who's got the most amazing collection of Hummel dolls. Remember what those are? No. Hummels, yeah, the little figurines. Uh huh. And and she loves it, and it's important to her. Yes. Her kids don't want it. I have a, I have the same. It's so funny because my parents are divorced, and so they each have their house, and both of them are collectors. My dad is an, an art. I know he's uh, he, he collects art and he has beautiful things. You know, he, he right. used to to paint, and uh, and it's like I don't even have enough walls in my house if I wanted if I, even if I wanted to. It's like That's I already funny. have my own art, you know. That's funny. And sure. then, yeah, and then my mom she has this obsession with China, and we were talking we were talking when I was in Brazil, and she was just so hurt that we're not keeping all her china I'm like mom we can't do that so it's very true no, and they don't want your stuff yeah so all these things the, the challenge in the book is prepare for your finish line you know un don't don't let unopened boxes haunt your family because when they open them and you're gone they won't know what to do with them or it's going to raise issues that you need to clarify while you're alive don't wait get it taken care of. so um you know i really this sounds maybe crazy but i had so much fun reading books about death and just making sure that if i'm going to write this book i better get all that stuff squared away for example a mm. burial plot mm -hmm. right so you're gonna you're gonna 
have your body cream cremated, which I'm not a big fan of, frankly, mm -hmm. or put in a casket and buried, where do you want that to go? Mm -hmm. So I mentioned that I, I lost my wife in 2014. We had lived in Orlando for 17 years. And so Bobby's body is buried in Orlando, Florida. Well, I got married and moved to Michigan where my current wife lives. And so like, where am I going to be buried? Wow. And I mean, we have, we have friends who are, whose first spouse died and they remarried and, and yet they're going to be buried next to their original mate. I know far away. So, but clear that up. Don't, don't leave things to chance. Cause it just, it becomes a huge burden for the people that are surviving you. So, Absolutely. And then you basic, but a lot of people don't get this done. Yes. Yeah. And it's very important. You're right. Just to, you know, to, it just makes it because losing a loved one is already so hard. And it, it, like you said, beautifully yeah. in the beginning of the book, doesn't matter how much, how prepared you are. It's already so hard. So um, ease their pain, try to ease their pain or their hardship. Exactly. You'd say, right. By preparing some things. Exactly. That's it's, a, so it's an act of love, right? Yes. It is, a, it is. The, being considered and it's an, an act of love. I love that. That's great, Patricia. It is an act of love to take care of these things before it's too late. Absolutely. I believe that. Yes, I love that. Well, um, let me ask you, how do you approach the spiritual side of preparing for the death of a loved one? Well, I am, as you know, and as you are, a Christian, a committed Christian. I love the Lord, I received Jesus as my savior as a young boy. So right at the very beginning of the book, I talk about how this is the most important thing that you need to take care of before you die. Mm -hmm. The last chapter of the book talks about ready golf. So uh, there's a, a thing that happens in golf when you're on a course and it's crowded Normally, it's a it's a gentleman's game, a gentle ladies game. You wait until it's your turn to hit the ball. Mm -hmm. But if if you're pressed because the course is full, when you get to your ball, you play it. You don't wait. And that's called ready golf. And I talk about the fact you need to be ready. You don't know when you're going to die, but be ready. And, you know, my hope really is that people who don't know Jesus will come to know him mm -hmm. as a result of reading this book. Yes. Years ago, a good friend, a very well-known author, said to me that a book is a long letter to one person. It's a long letter. To, it's a very intimate form of communication. Mm. People read books one at a time. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I picture sitting across the table at a cafe, enjoying a cup of coffee with just one person. Mm -hmm. like my early books, I actually put on the corner of my computer screen, a yellow post-it note with somebody's name on it. Mm -hmm. And I wrote the whole book for that person. How about that? I did. I love that idea. It's, yeah. it's excellent. Well, if you're reading a book and the author says, now some of you, or mm -hmm. now most of you. Yeah. He didn't have a good editor. She didn't have a good editor because right. people don't read books generally in groups. Right. It's, you curl up with a book and you have this conversation yes. with the author. Best. So I wrote this book with one man in, in mind. I wrote mm. the whole book. I actually haven't given him his copy. He doesn't have any idea. It will shock uh, him. It will shock him. <laughs> that's incredible. A long letter to him. That's wonderful. I love that idea. I never, well, you know, I, I wrote my book on you as you know the reader, but uh, I never thought about actually imagining because it's so true that while you write a book, there's always somebody or more than one person sometimes that pop into your That's mind true. as you're writing something, you know, uh, whether you write a book or like I, I write articles mm -hmm. for newspapers, you know, you just, you, you, when you're talking about faith subjects, it, it, yeah. You are always inspired by some or your own your own struggles or somebody right. that you know, sure. 
And it's a, it's a very, very important thing to just imagine. What If I could say this to them, what would I say? How would oh, I say exactly, it? Exactly. You know? That's it. That's I love so that. important. It's so important. I love that. Yeah, thank you. Well, um, let me ask you this. What about caretakers? Because you were a tech, tech, caretaker for 30 months. So you have a lot to say. What role do you tell your caretakers that they can play in making it easier for their loved ones to get to their finish line. Yeah. If you can, physically and financially, um, be your primary, or be the primary caregiver of the people you love. If you can, if you can afford nursing care or whatever, um, my 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 counsel is as much as possible be that person yourself mm -hmm. you know one of the great tragedies of the pandemic was the millions of people who died without their loved ones right yes. there and you know that's this is one of the question marks all of us have when we get to heaven and ask the lord how did that happen why did that happen you know i have an uncle who died alone his wife his children were not there so my counsel is as much as you possibly can for your good, as well as for your loved one's good, be the person there. Um, you know, in some cases, in many cases, the person who's dying isn't that aware of their surroundings. Mm -hmm. But when Nancy and I got married, and actually when Bobby and I got married in 1970, we did the old traditional vows mm -hmm. and we said in sickness mm -hmm. and in health right. till death do us part so there, there's something i you know i'm a word person but i think words are really important right. and if you say that if you vow that then then that's your privilege that's your mm -hmm. call mm -hmm. in sickness and in health till de death do us part so I want to be a man of my word. And I think people generally want to be people of their word. Mm -hmm. But the answer really is, if you're married and the person who's sick is your mate, you're the primary caregiver. If you mm -hmm. can, from a health perspective, and honestly, it's, it's incredibly rich. As I look back on those 30 months, I wouldn't yeah. trade a single one. And some of it was really hard, frankly. Um, and my children saw me serving my late wife as mm -hmm. I did, which, you know, children are like video recorders right. and they never turn them off. That's it. So they're watching how you treat their mother because they want to know if you really meant business when you said till death do us part, mm -hmm. or if that was just something you said and didn't mean. Mm -hmm. So I, I just in the just in the category of words mean things, I think it's critically important. Absolutely, and you know, you just said something that you know it, it is a horrible thing that we have to go through when somebody that we love dies. But as believers, you know, we are always trying to give a testimony of our faith and our trust in God and our just how, the way that we be, we behave the way that we yeah. we keep our words as you said so it is an opportunity if you do it the right way for you not just your loved ones like like bobby just showed your daughters and you mm -hmm. how to die well right. but you also showed your children how to to be there how to be the caretaker exactly. that you needed right. to be so it's yeah. uh it's yeah. it's also so and i know that this book because there's a chapter that refers to caretakers you know to just you know to help caretakers so it will also help those who who are trying caring for right. um for the people they love that they know that they are we, we live in a in a no deposit no return society throw away mm-hmm and I think, that, again, for the sake of your children who are watching you, mm -hmm. um, I think it's critical that you take a deep breath, step up, and be that person. Again, if your health and if your financial situation can afford you spending that time, I think that's what you need to do. Absolutely.
Yeah. Well, Robert, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, and we're, we're getting you, to the end of our interview. I wanted to know, is there anything else that you would like to tell my audience about this book, about the finish line and uh, dispelling fear, finding peace and preparing for the end of your life? Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Yeah. Um, so, so much. First of all, thank you for your time. This has been a pleasure. And um and I years ago there was a guy named a man named Zig Ziglar. Mm -hmm. I know. And he was an amazing communicator and became a friend toward the end of his life, a remarkable man. And he used to joke when he'd speak, he would say, you know, you you know what you ought to do, what whatever it is, lose weight, pl plan your funeral, whatever. And you say, you know what? I'm going to do that when I get around to it. Mm -hmm. And then he'd pass out these poker chips that had printed round and then the word T-U-I-P, <laughs> round to it. And he said, finally, you've got around to it. Now you yeah. can't say, I'll do that when I get around to it because here's your round to it. Well, everybody would groan. You know, he was he was fantastic, man. Great communicator. Had yeah. this great Southern draw. And everybody kind of groaned, but it's true. It's How many true. times do we see something that needs to be done or see something that we should be doing, Doing, we say, yeah, this isn't a good time. I'll do it when I get around to it. Absolutely. And there's a lot in this book that challenges people to take a deep breath and do the thing that they know they need to do before it's too late. Absolutely. It is definitely a, a book that needs to be in your library, not just sitting there, but that you yeah, need to right. read. I have many right. there. <laughs> there you go. You know, you have uh, and you need to read it and you really take a, take it from, from someone who has, I mean, you've done a ton of research, not just experience, but you, ha you have spent hours and hours of research on so many things and compiled a beautiful work for the body of Christ. And yeah, thank uh, you. Sure. congratulations on this book i know Thank it's you. gonna it's gonna do it's gonna be fantastic and mm -hmm. i'm uh, looking forward to writing uh, a column for the atlanta journal about it okay, and good. we're also thank you uh, for offering to give a copy for somebody in my audience that will share oh, this so tremendous. thank you well, so thank much. you Patricia. bless Th you friend thank All you right. you too bye, okay, bye. bye.